Hey guys, it's your girl Foz. Welcome back to another Stardew Valley video. Today is a different video. Today I'm going to be talking about my experience with the Stardew Valley Cup, the things that I learned about Stardew, and also things that might be helpful in your gameplay that I definitely utilize in the speedrun. Let's get into it. So I made some notes on some things that I found important and I found about 11 things that we definitely utilized in the run. Half of these are things that I learned about Saju and had to utilize during my run. And another half are just things that we used in the speed run that I wanted to suggest to you guys to show you what we did to optimize our run. Before I get into today's clip, I definitely want to shout out all my other teammates that was a part of Sandy's Candies. If it wasn't for them, I would not be where I am and we did such a great job. So this goes out to the Habu who honestly carried us most of the way. A little Simsy who I am the biggest fan of and I absolutely love her and Brandy again who I love so much as well. I'm going to put all their links of their socials down in the description below so please check them out as well. Now to start off with number one which everyone has been asking is animation cancelling. I had to learn how to utilize it in my run because I essentially had to use animation cancelling to cut down trees and get through mines as quickly as I could. Animation cancelling is PC specific where you can cancel the animation after you do an action and that will cut your down almost by half. You can actually hold down shift and delete at the same time and alternate between your left click or C with the R button and when you've done this correctly you've successfully completed the animation cancel. Now as a casual player I tend to not use this but after the run I cannot stop myself now. <laughs> not only was I able to use it on the tree so I can get my team a whole bunch of wood but my team was also utilizing this by hitting the rocks and using animation cancelling. You can also use it with your watering can too so you can speed through your watering. I did have a macro set down for the right shift and the delete and I was alternating between my left click and my R to complete a full animation and it might take you some time but with some practice I promise you will get there. Not only was it useful for us to get even more resources in a short amount of time but we were able to speed through our levels quicker especially earlier on as well. So once you nail it down believe me you can't turn back just like me. <laughs> Now number two isn't really a tip but I definitely saw the value of it and that is teamwork. I know that certain times of the run I definitely needed to be in certain places of Pelican Town while the rest of my team were in the mines. And I communicated to them where I was at because if I arrived to the mines too late or too early and they were meant to be at a certain point of the mine levels then that would definitely screw up our run. Obviously my team wanted to get down the mines as quickly as they could but they didn't want to use all their energy in one day. So communication is key. And we made sure that we utilized that so we knew what everyone was doing and we weren't wasting days if we didn't need to. For example, little Simsy was dating Shane so she needed to wait for a certain time for Shane to leave Marnie's ranch. This will be a great time for me to cut down trees, for Brandigan to be doing his fishing and for Habu to get together what he needed for the community center. Or for example, later on I needed to upgrade my axe but I needed to wait till Clint was open at 9am. So instead of my team just waiting there and doing nothing, we made sure we utilized our time as best as we could being in bed at the same time, leaving the bed and completing actions at the same time. This was all so key and so important and that's what I think made us win. We kept the communication going, we kept telling each other what we were doing and what was happening and we made sure that we utilized our days. So definitely teamwork is key. So bright in here, I'm gonna change the button. <laughs> Sparsy, this looks better doesn't it? Also, please forgive me this construction happening outside, so I'm gonna do my best with the audio. So number three is a tip that I've mentioned on this channel before, but I didn't know you could actually do it off your farm, and that is the use of screen capture. Now, I'm not sure what consoles these are available on, but I know Stardew via Switch and PC has this option available. If you go into your settings in Stardew Valley and scroll to the very bottom, there should be a screen capture option. That takes a screenshot of wherever you are standing right then and there. So if you're on your farm, you can take a screen capture of your whole farm. This was actually utilized by myself while I was foraging around Cindersat Forest. I was walking into Cindersat Forest, taking a screenshot and having a look around for forages. This saves so much time so I didn't have to end up running around Cindersat just to find some forages or if there weren't any forages, there wasn't a reason for me to be foraging. It gave me an idea where I needed to walk around and what I should be picking up because my team relied me to be at certain places at certain times and the screen capture allowed me to have a view of everything that was around me so then I can only pick up what I needed to pick up. If this is something that you're interested in, let's say for example you are completing the community center and you're looking for certain forageables, you can head into any place in Pelican Town and take a screen capture. For example, you can use this in the Pelican Town center as well. You just need to be standing in that area or you can even use this on the beach 
if you don't want to go to the far east side. Super useful tip. Just turn it into a tips and tricks video. <laughs> Now this trick is only in co-op, so it might not be applicable to a lot of people, but it was definitely a cool trick that I learned. Let's say for example, you use all your energy and you end up passing out. Because you're in co-op, not everyone will be in bed. You can actually still get the time to walk into bed and go to sleep. And if you do this successfully and the rest of your team go to sleep, you end up with full energy the next day. Now in solo, unfortunately, when you do this, and I'll show this right here, when you pass out by yourself, you go to sleep automatically and you wake up the next day with half your energy. So if you aren't playing in cold, why not use this trick? You can have someone pass themselves out and use all their energy while someone else can run back onto your farm. You can have one person use all their energy and pass out whilst the other person can have some time to run back to the farm. And whilst on the topic of co-op, this is our next tip for number six. There is a term called duping, 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 which is technically duplicating something in the game. We have some rules as to what we can dupe and what we couldn't dupe. And one of the things we could dupe were things such as geo, and stones in the mine. Now, how does this work? There becomes a lag issue when there are two people trying to break a rock at the same time. Let's say you're both standing at the same iron geode or gold geode and you start to break it at the same time. If you both break it exactly at the same time, you get double the amount of ore that comes out of that geode. Because we have four people breaking the same geodes at the same time, we were able to dupe gold ore, diamonds, and pretty much anything that we wanted within the mines. Apparently there is a way to do this off the farm, but within our rules, we were only allowed to do that within the mines. That was able to save us time because we didn't have to run around and farm for more ore or for more gems. This was definitely cool when there was a diamond geode and we could break it at the same time. If you all time it at the same time and all four of you hit a diamond, diamond geo, once it breaks, you might actually get four diamonds from that instead of the one, which is honestly so cool. And it was so cool to see my whole team do it all together. Number six, I feel like is a no brainer, but I decided to bring it up anyway. Food is very important. And I'm sure everyone knows the importance of food when you're using your energy or your health within the mines or skull cabin, or whether that's just on your farm or in Pelican town. What was really cool is that because I was leveling up in foraging, at foraging level one, you get field snacks unlocked. And because I was chopping down so much wood, I was also getting seeds at the same time. This is something that I mentioned in my previous videos as well, but if you have a whole bunch of the common seeds just chilling in a chest, why not make them into field snacks? Sure, the health and the energy refund isn't that great, but it's still useful. I was trying to create these as much as I could, so if my team did decide to go back into the mines, they would have some sort of food to take back with them. Likewise, we did the same with foragers as well. I would go into Sinisat Forest, my team would go to the bus stop and the little forest behind our farm and picked up any forages that we could use. As long as you're not using it for the community center or for a recipe, why not eat them? They have no use if they're just sitting in a chest. Also, when you increase friendship with a certain Pelican Town resident, they may eventually give you a food item in the mail. And if you are reading your mail often, which you should be, you could definitely get some food, which will help you as well. Likewise, depending if you chose a fruit bat cave or even the mushroom cave, anything that gives you health and energy within them, definitely utilize them as well well. Eventually you'll have an inventory full of food and you'll be fine to go to the mines more often. That's pretty much everything that I learned from myself for the Stardew Valley Cup that I thought was pretty cool but there are some other tips that I can recommend to you guys that we also utilize in the Stardew Valley Cup that might also be useful to you guys as well. Number seven is the use of chests everywhere. Now I know this is also a no-brainer but we had a chest specifically for the community center, we had a chest specific for items from the mines, we had a chest specific for just like random random things that we didn't know what to use. So if someone did want something random, they can check that chest and see if there's something there that they could use. Obviously chests are really good for storage, but they're also really good if you know how to organize them efficiently. You can either color code them or have a sign right behind them to tell you what is in that chest. Just be sure to check them regularly because there might be something, you know, hiding from you. Definitely utilize chests because they only require 50 wood to build, which is really cheap and honestly helped us out a lot in our run. Number eight honestly should be earlier on but I'm going to mention it here anyway. If you are completing the community center and there are just some of the bundles that you don't want to complete, things like the bulletin board or the fish tank, but you have completed the other bundles, you can actually go to the Jojo Mart and start a Jojo Mart program at any point of your community center. So let's say for example you've unlocked the boiler room, the pantry and the craft room, but you don't feel like completing the rest of the bundles, you can then start the Jojo Mart program and just buy your way through
through those bundles. This was honestly new to me and I didn't know until Habu had mentioned it. So this might be something of interest. Just know though, if you do go through the Jojimart program, at the end you do end up completing the Jojimart. So if you prefer the community center, then just ignore this part. <laughs> Number nine is something that I utilize all the time in casual plays, but we also utilize in our run. And that is resetting the minds. So I don't have to repeat myself. I am going to put a short that I've uploaded in the annotations so you can utilize the reset mind trick. Essentially using level 20, 40 and 80 can be reset for your copper, iron and gold ore and potentially any other minerals that you might be looking for. So instead of having to run down the mines continuously, to save you some time resetting the mines is a great trick that you should use. That way you're efficiently using your time, probably even using less energy as well and getting all the resources you need in a shorter amount of time. This is something that was definitely helpful in our run and saved us so much time. Number 10, which is definitely something else that I've always suggested, which I'm sure you guys are aware about, but I'm just going to put it as a reminder. The traveling car can save you so much time. Now the traveling car obviously has items that are a little more expensive than normal, but let's say you are going through the community center or there are some items that you're in desperate need of. Although the traveling car can be random, it is useful to check her on Fridays and on Sundays. There might be a little hidden gem that you are definitely in need of and she might randomly have it. Obviously it might be time consuming to have to run all the way down to Cinder Sat Forest to check her out but if you're doing something like checking out the secret woods so you can get yourself more hardwood then definitely think about checking her out. Unfortunately she wasn't that useful in our run but in our practice runs she came in with the clutch with giving us seeds that we needed and items that we could use for the community center. So just a reminder give the traveling car a little love. Just, just a little bit. <laughs> Number 11 is to those that like to spice things up and get into relationships with Pelican Town residents. And that is remembering events and birthdays. When you gift a Pelican Town resident something that they like or love on their birthday, you get eight times more friendship points from that item than if you normally gave that person the same item. This will save you time to getting yourself to 10 hearts if that's what you're trying to go for. Because 10 hearts doesn't decay in friendship, but anything lower than that will if you forget to gift them. Also remember that there are certain events that you can interact with your special person which will increase their friendship with you as well. Going to the events and talking to them increases their friendship but for example if you go to the flower dance on spring 13 and you dance with that certain someone which you'll need to be full hearts with them this will also increase your friendship with them. This is the same for Christmas as well if they're your secret gift giver and if you gift them something that they like or they love. So remember that if you're trying to rush your friendship with that certain someone. And lastly but surely not least is keeping a list of of things that you want to complete rather than be on the farm or off the farm to be sure that you're organized. During the Stardew Valley Cup, my team and I had a Google Doc that was open to tell us which days that we were leaving and which days we were just going to sleep. This was to ensure that we were gifting people on their birthdays and going to certain events so we could make our points. Obviously, as a casual player, you won't have to worry about certain events like this, but Stardew Valley always has a massive amount of things to complete. And if you're possibly someone like me who has bad memory, then keep in a piece of paper or even even a book next to you and writing down the things that you want to complete could be useful. Every time you explore Sanji Valley, there's always something new that comes about. And if you tend to forget to complete certain things, especially if they're seasonal specific, then definitely have a log right next to you of things that you want to complete. So for example, whether that be seeds that you need to buy to ensure that they grow in time or upgrading your items such as your hoe and your watering can during winter so then they don't disturb your farming time during the other seasons. This was important for our run and I'm sure it was important for the other teams to be sure that they were out when they needed to be. But as a casual player, I'm sure keeping up on all the tasks is very distracting. So definitely keep a log right next to you and just cross it off once you're done. Or if you remember to do them, then good on ya. <laughs> And that is everything that I learned from the Saji Valley Cup, guys. Thank you so much for everything that you've done. I couldn't have been here without you. And I hope you've learned something from this video. If this video was helpful, a like will greatly be appreciated. And if you enjoyed this content, why not subscribe for some more Saji Valley videos? I will hopefully see you guys live on my twitch.tv forward slash fuzzerino. And hopefully I'll see you guys next time. Take care.